so here we are in the anti tower. Very interesting looking place. And, well, I'm half and half a fan of this place. It, it is nice to see yet something else uh, made by the Charlands. Because, as I've said before in the library, one of my greatest disappointments is to fight, despite the fact that the very people we're supposed to root for in this game are Charlands, there's very little the game actually tells us about them. But, aesthetically, otherwise, I think this place is absolutely gorgeous, so. The music is. it's pretty good. It kind of fits the atmosphere. Well, again, I've also run this time a zillion times. Uh, back in this patch, I got it like every single day in Expert Roulette, so... In some regards, I kind of got a little bit sick of it, but... It's still a very interesting place, and I like it. For the most part. So, as you can see, there's probably going to be a lot of fast-forwarding in this episode, because, frankly... I really don't have that much to talk about here. Uh, I don't have anything planned. There's nothing really plot or character specific that I really want to mention. Uh, but you actually like can see the uh, the lovely whirlpool down there of Aether, which is really nice. It's a very nice touch. I'm not sure what's going on with the. I'm, I'm just looking around the camera for things to make up shit about the waterfall in here. Um, I get I get nothing on that. Absolutely nothing. I mean, it certainly adds to the beauty of this place, but as far as explanation why it's here, uh, obviously I can't even bullshit one. But that's alright. That's totally alright. I can't know everything. I can't make up everything. Although making up absolute bullcrap stories about things on the spot is rather fun from time to time, even if it does get people to probably laugh at, like, you know, be like, what the hell is she talking about? Where the hell is her mind going? But it matters not. So yeah, thin, like, how do the Charlene's like build like just thin platforms like this? But yeah, you math nerds might notice, uh, and it's actually present in most of Idleshire as it is all the log logarithmic spirals everywhere. Yeah, Charlene's are all about that crap. Here for me? No, no. Heck with you, game. I do not like you right now. You know, for this place being called the Anti Tower, I seem to be going a lot of more upwards than anti, but what do I know? So, obviously, our first boss is a giant Pirogo, and I'm not sure if the game actually really goes into this besides maybe uh, fluff pieces with books and everything, but the Charlians have a little bit of habit of in viewing the intelligence on ordinary creatures, uh, kind of making familiars in the process. Did I go through this in the library? I honestly don't remember. Uh, two actors, their servants, and stuff like that. And the pierogos that are actually, yeah, here's something I could talk about, that are left behind in the hinterlands are ones that were abandoned during the exodus, and because obviously their masters aren't around anymore, they, they've kind of mostly regained their feral status. Like, why frogs? I want to see some other creatures.
So, apologies, nothing really much to say there other than I wish people wouldn't stand in stuff constantly and would kill things faster. So there's what I find interesting about this place. You travel down the up staircase. Um, I, I get that it's supposed to be a joke, and I love, like, um, kind of MC Escherus place in here. Am I thinking of the right artist? Whatever. Um, staircases both go up and down. There is no such thing as an up staircase or a down staircase. They're both the same thing. And even things like an elevator or an escalator, even though both their names signify that they should only go up, they also go down as well. I've never before seen a staircase or elevator or escalator in my life that was only capable of going in one direction. Again, I, I know it's supposed to be a joke. You know, considering this place is called the Anti-Tower and all, but... That was one thing that just kind of rubbed me the wrong way. Like, especially because... You know, we're, we're here on the... Into the Ethereal Sea, you know, ho hoping to... To get closer to, you know, Hyaline and hopefully find some trace of Minfelia or something or some kind of clue. So, it's, it's a bit of a kind of somber tone in here. Like, not entirely. Like, it's not completely depressing. But... We're not here on a jovial mission. So, in case you guys aren't aware, because a lot of people don't believe me. Yes, you do want to kill these friggin' doorkeepers first. Because even though they, the first set and the second set that they summon out of these sideways doors are a given. If you leave the friggin' doorkeeper alive long enough, he will summon a third set. I have seen it happen more than once. I am not full of crap. Even though a couple people have called me on that. But yes, he will. Eventually he will. It will take a while, and you will need kind of shitty DPS to do it, but it, it is indeed very possible. And, and obviously you have to keep him alive. So you're not very likely to see it, but it is not impossible. Plus, it makes more sense for everyone's AoE damage anyway to get the second set as out as fast as possible because the first one is likely not dead yet and boom, 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 pew, 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 more AoE for your fuck. Just say. I, mean, I know it's kind of a moot point now considering how late and the patch it is and Stormblood probably already, yeah, actually will already be out by the time you see this episode. So it'll or, uh, be even more absurd. Especially if you can unsick this place. But yeah, even even when I that uh, the the minimum the you know the eye level you came in here when this was new and relevant, you would still be unlikely to see it. But it does happen. It does happen. Uh, I've I've seen and been in more than my share of groups who can't pew 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 to save their lives. Sad as it is, but it does happen. So now we have uh, these golems. Which is a little bit up more up my alley in regards to Charlene constructs and whatnot. But I don't think I ever got we ever now that I think about it, why are there spriggans in here? Like spriggans are already like semi intelligent creatures. Like, you know, they're capable of speech, all that. Like unlike the pierogos who were ordinary frogs before being employed by the Charlanes. Like, what are they doing in here? Uh, get, game, can you stop attacking me with the lampposts? I mean, from the dialogue, it's just they want here, they're in here for the shinies, but what shinies? I mean, maybe they thought there were shinies because things are glowing, I guess. I don't know, pulling stuff out of my butt. But how did they get in here? We came in through the only entrance that that wasn't like completely utterly sealed off. And even Nostrola couldn't open that one. It's like, oh, I wonder what's in Matoya's closet, but my magics never actually were able to break open the door. Yeah, way to actually, you know, 
to start snooping through your master's closet without her permission, Istola. It's a bit rude. But you know, I, I actually, I, I actually ain't gonna cut her a bit of slack on that because um, if, if this is an RPG and that is kind of standard fare to, to break into people's stuff, so. Even though I'm not a fan of Yastrola and I will take any chance I get to make fun of her, I will actually give her a pass on that. I mean, who, who, who the hell wouldn't want to see what Matoya is hiding in her closet anyway? So... Our next boss... Is a Spriggan. Again, I, I got nothing on how the hell they got their way in here. Save everyone from what? There's nothing going on in here, really. It's just, uh... Well, maybe you, you want to protect your, your your fellow Spriggans from... From all the enchanted Charlan creatures in here? Maybe? I don't know. I don't know. But in case it was not immediately obvious... Yes, this is a David Bowie reference. And when it was brand new, uh, David Bowie had kind of just left in this world. So I don't, I honestly don't know. Maybe someone should ask that in a live letter, even though it's kind of not relevant content anymore. Maybe someone should ask that. Uh, number one, what is he named in other languages? And number two, uh, was it just coincidence that Bowie died when this was relevant? Or was this an actual shoehorned in homage to him. Either way, I'm, I'm, I'm not offended by either response. But that's something that's kind of always had me curious. So at least the, the part about the other languages. If anyone can answer that, uh, please do. Because I'm, I'm just genuinely intrigued. Brigands off me! Hi! Healer is going to die! I'm not wasting benediction on myself. Get them off me. Thank you. I only have so much MP, guys. Hide behind the rock, you silly. How is that not hitting him? I don't know. I call hacks. I totally call hacks. Unless just from the angle I'm seeing it at, it, he really is. I don't, say, I don't know. I don't know, guys. Uh, Shroud, where you hurry the hell up already? Okay, thanks. I it says Ziggy takes careful aim. Well, it's not careful enough if you uh, don't pick someone else instead of trying to shoot at the rock. But uh, yeah, that, that is uh, quite, quite one shiny hunk of rock you got there, Ziggy. Where did you find that? I mean, I I'm happy to let you have it if you can find your way out of here. But I'm just very curious. Oh, I just healed in Claire's stance there. Whoops! Get for me? Get for me? No! Game, game, you suck. You totally suck. I actually did a stream a couple days ago where I did all the other unlockable level 60 non-main story dungeons and I didn't get shit for gear and I was so pissed. Oh shit, went too far, too far, too far, too far. Sorry, sorry, did not mean to do that. Totally my fault, guys. Sorry. I forgot that set drops from the ceiling.
I I'm not sure what kind of gravity-defying magic they have in here that the chandeliers... I again, I know it's in the anti-tower and this is part of the joke, but... I I what is going on with these chandeliers here? Like, what will un happen if I unhook it from the floor? Like, will it go crashing into the ceiling? I don't know. Someone ought to come in here and perform an experiment. But I guess now we're in the, the the actual tower proper, I guess. I mean, it is called the anti-tower, not the generic upside-down architecture out in the open where the CSRLC can be directly seen. Like, this is an actual building with the ceiling and a roof. A carpeted roof, no less. I don't, I don't know. That, all this shit kind of confused me. But if you, understand, if you actually look up... Is it in here? Is it in here? Yes. Is it? I really can't see from here. Uh, my TV is very dark. But uh, the mammoths and stuff do, I think it might be in the next room, do actually fall from the ceiling. Or the floor. Whatever you want to call it, it. I don't know. When you're upside down like this, what is the correct term to use? Seriously. So that also begs the question, are we actually upside down or did they build this place upside down? I don't know. That's also a question worth answering. I, I'm, I'm literally just, just making absolute crap up. Kind of par for the course for me. Would you kindly get out of the AoEs? Thank you. Actually, game, let me roll on that. Thank you. Thank you. There we go. So who lights these candles and what is fueling them? Because because eventually the candle's gonna burn out. So I find it kind of interesting that they have the the more the familiars on the upper levels and on the lower levels here they have the actual mammoths. I wonder if there was kind of a reason for that. Honestly, don't know. Again, I'm, I'm literally at this point just, just absolutely making things up to talk about that might intrigue me. That none of you guys actually probably give a crap about, but it amuses me. So why the heck not? Very curious. Not a lot of things. I mean, mostly my mind is full of crack chip thick material, but every once in a while an intelligent thought does go through my head, guys. I, I, I know it seems a little bit far-fetched, but it does happen. Okay, so in this room, see, 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 there. They're on, they're on pillars, but yeah, the shit hangs from the ceiling. Okay, I knew it. I knew it was here somewhere. It's just not in that first room. I'm just used to them people pulling that first set of mammoths into that first room, so I think that's why I confused it with this one. These mammoths are so adorable. I mean, look at them. You know, I almost wish these mammoths had a little bit of dialogue. Uh, I'm not sure they have the the capacity to communicate as such, but it would have been interesting. You know, if they, you know, they they would probably think we're we're intruders in here. I mean, we don't have any fancy tattoos or magic disabling phrases. With which to tell them, hey, it's okay, we're, we're welcome here. Thanks for that, Matoya, by the way. Yeah, I swear she's, she's just, like, just, just trolling. And she probably knows damn well how to shut this, this crap off. Like, oh, the Golden Guardians are in there. Well, have at it. I mean, I don't think she's she would be, like, setting up as doomed to failure. But I think at the same time, and again, I, I'm literally just making stuff up here. It, it, it could be considered somewhat of a test, that, you know, that, that, that we're worthy of the, the the knowledge and the favors that she is imbuing upon us, especially since, you know, part of her quote-unquote job is to make sure no one with ill intent gets in. Like, I, like I'm sure she, 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 you know, generally cares that no one with the wrong intent gets their hands 
on old Charlie and Secrets. But damned if she could have made it a little bit easier on us. Gay, would you drop me something? Jeez. This game really does not want me to gear up. Like, it is ridiculous how many dungeons I've gone without a single thing. Um, well, you're creepily familiar. But I don't get a lolly ho. This part is obviously pretty standard. Beat the shit out of the dolls. See, so see these mammoths talk. Well, mammoth like puppets, I guess. Mindless Cretans. I am not a Cretan. Maybe mindless, but I'm not a Cretan. I'm a giraffe. But yeah, there. Uh, unlike the Final Fantasy IV fight, there is no like special mechanic here where. You have to be mindful of your kill order. That is absolutely not a thing right here. Because obviously you're going to face Calcabrina anyway. Now, it's important to know everybody. Oh, don't stand in the gaze attack, guys. That Kagabrina actually does not cleave at all. So, with the exception of that gaze attack, you can stand safely in front of her, him, it. Uh, because his brace attack, obviously, you can only hit her, him, her, it, shim, whatever, from the front. So unless you're trying to get positionals in, because of the fact that she doesn't... We're just calling her sheep for now. Alright, pigtails, we're just calling her sheep. It is safe to attack from the front at all times. The, 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 the tank buster is, is single target only. It is not a cleave. So many people I see, especially range, like, stand in front. Like, nothing is gonna happen. You just need to dodge the gaze attack and then literally you can stand on the tank the whole fucking time. Uh, guys! Like, really? Stop it! You're making this 20 times more difficult for me. Like, I'm already almost out of MP. Finally. 
game would you drop me something? Holy crap! Yeah, sorry guys, nobody gets any accommodations for that because you all didn't pay attention and you all stood in a bunch of stuff. Sorry. Little salty right now. Just a little. I don't hate you, but I'm a little salty. Uh, well, I'm glowing, but I'm not suffering Hollywood heart attack. Yeah. Uh, one of my crystals of reaction. Hi, Dylan. Hi. Hi. Hello there. I, I am looking for my friend. Mayhap you have seen her. We heard you spoke to her. What did you say? What happened to her? We're about to foot her, put her face on a milk carton. Through time and space hast thou journeyed unto me, as I knew thou wouldst. I keep hitting the wrong button again. Damn you PS4 and PC controller differences! We are the word of the mother. We, who were once called Minfilia. Uh, hi? Uh, when did you grow all that hair? And will you please put some underpants on? Much time hath passed for thee since the bloody banquet. Since, since I hearkened to her word. Mother, Hydelin guided me towards Yishtola and Thancred. That I might be swept up in their flow and delivered under the ethereal sea. Yeah, funny how uh, Yastrola didn't. No, well, maybe she had no way of knowing. Uh, didn't realize, that, you know, another person got sucked up in there, even if it was yeah. Minfilia's intent. Adrift and alone. Her voice silent once more. I prayed for those we had lost, for those we can yet save. To her, I would make an offering. Oh, not like you had much else to do. We speak now with one voice. One will. One word. Unto thee we bequeath the most precious of gifts. The truth which lieth at the heart of this world. Okay. Thus do we beseech thee once more. Hear, feel, sing. Can you be a little bit more specific with your words, mother? Please. You cl clearly speak my language. Several thousand word vocabulary, please use it. Before there was life in the depths of the ethereal sea, light and dark did once dwell as one. But the darkness coveted power, and the balance was broken. Thus was I forced to banish him unto the distant heavens, to forever remain apart. A moon bound. In sundering the star did we cry out, and the barriers twixt plains chanced to falter. Across ten and three were we then divided. Reflections of the source, each possessed of a shard. All right. Zodiac longeth to be made whole. For his restoration, for his resurrection, his servants labor without cease. Well, we killed one of them. You were there for that. I killed the second one, and the other kind of 
got sucked in and fed to a primal. So there's that. They seek to tear down the barriers which surround the source. Thus do they rejoice in their ardor, in your calamities, for each marks a rejoining. Seven times have they succeeded. Seven times hath the darkness grown stronger. Seven times have I failed. The Asians cannot be suffered to continue. This, this is my final. No, 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 I'm the only one who let to have Hollywood heart attacks around here. No, 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 no. The crystal's power is all but spent. With what remains, I will return you to the shore of the ethereal sea. Blessed children, go forth and seek. Yeah, okay, we learned some backstory, but he here's the problem, Heidelin, okay? And here's the huge beef I have with you. Actually, you know what? We'll hold that thought and let this cutscene play out. We'll hold that thought. Thank the Twelve! Oh, come on, I'm a warrior of light. You know I was going to make it out of this, okay? Did you find her? Did you find Minfilia? Um, about that. Yeah, I found her. Uh, she's sort of okay. But I I'm not sure we should count her among the living or not. I mean, she's technically not dead, but... She's uh, kind of been promoted us to halfway goddess of the world, the world now? Of the mother. I'm not sure I understand. Nor am I. Cryo? Uh, Heidelin possessed her. Using her as a vessel. Let's compare this to how the Asians kind of possessed Thagrid. There we go! This is not that hard to comprehend. You guys are Charlayans. As unbelievable as it sounds, I see no reason to doubt her. The words tale. No one was more sensitive to the will of Hydaelyn than Minfilia. And if Hydaelyn has grown so weak that she can barely make herself heard, it is not hard to see why Minfilia, having joined with her, might struggle to maintain her own form. What? Why would she need to maintain her own form? Are you saying... Are you saying she's gone? Minfilia gets sucked up in the flow. Heidelin is really weak. Clearly summoned Minfilia there for a reason. And Minfilia is like, okay, mother, you're you're kind of weak. But that here, be. here, take me. Not take now. me. Not after all we have accomplished. We were meant to wash her in the dawn's light together. Alpha, no, cal calm down. Calm down. Calm down. She's technically still safe. She threw herself on the fire to fuel your dawn's light, boy. You'll just have to usher it in on your own. Must you be so ungentle? Uh, no. Bitch has got a point here. You can't save everybody. Minfilia made the fucking ultimate sacrifice for us. Shut up, everybody! Tell me about the Scions, boy. The... the that the Scions of the Seventh Dawn lay before Aeolzia's salvation. 
More like we hired an adventurer who became the warrior of light who we thrust all our crap onto. Whenever the realm is threatened, be it by Primal, Asian, Garlean, or any other, we take up arms in her defense, that all in Eorzea may live to see a brighter tomorrow. And that's very noble of you. But in chasing after these lofty goals of yours, you seem to have lost sight of some basic truths. To win a war, you must be willing to do whatever it takes. To fight, to kill, and if necessary, to die. The path you've chosen is paved with the dead. Walk it with your eyes open, or not at all. I know the truth of which you speak, and have from the first. If the Asians will go to any length to resurrect their god, then we must needs be as committed to our cause, to unmask them and their schemes, and to crush them both utterly. Yeah, good luck with that. We're out of white ore site. Um, there is much to be done. Yes, of course. Uh, like what? I mean, I know sitting around moping isn't going to help, but what is next on our plate? Guys, we, we don't have a plan. At all. Thancred, wait! No. No, this is all wrong. Okay, he needs a hug right about now. Probably feels completely fucking terrible about this. I, I mean, it probably really hits him because of all people he probably wants to apologize to about the failures of the Crystal Braves. Uh, it it would be Minfilia, and I think he's really upset that he's he's been robbed of that chance to do that. But anyway, back to what I was bitching to Heidelin about. Okay. Now, this is entirely headcanon of mine, and while there has not really been anything to disprove it, there's nothing been really been proven to... to there hasn't really been much to, to disprove this theory, but there's, but there's nothing really to, to prove, you know, any sort of them, right? Uh, I'm of the belief that Zordiac is more the totalitarian kind of ruler, uh, where everything is one under his rule, and Minfil uh, not Minfilia, Heidelin is more of the let her children have their free will and forge their own destinies kind of thing. Now, why do I say this? Well, Heidelin, maybe the reason you failed seven times is because you're not being very forthcoming about how to use your gifts to vanquish the darkness. And I'm not sure if it's kind of a rewrite thing, but it has been mentioned to me that Heidelin was rather an unknown entity in 1.0. And I, I kind of half shoehorn in a headcanon about, well, maybe after uh, the, the, the current calamity, Heidelin in growing weaker by, you know, the century or whatever the hell time frame one you use here, she's becoming more desperate and thus has been more forthcoming about who she is and a little bit about her gifts and whatever. I mean, that's, that's pretty much how I'm, I'm somewhat explaining it because all of a sudden now everybody knows who Heidelin was when apparently in 1.0 they did it. But, the Asians do have a point. It was brought up by La Habreja and uh, Igeorum, and it was also way brought up way back in 2.1 when we first meet Elidibus about blah blah blah, if we but understood the Echo, you'll be a one mind and crap. Yeah, we don't really understand what the Echo really truly does. Besides give us these flashback powers, we're immune to primals, and that we can be bequeathed crystals of light. And that's pretty much it. This whole still thing about the students of Baldessian, as Kryla said, is an organization dedicated to researching her gifts. Heidelin, you have an entire organization, which is now gone, by the way, who had to actually look into research for all these gifts you're given to them, to, to these people, to help save the world and vanquish the darkness. Okay? Telling people, okay, go and vanquish the darkness is the pretty big fucking vague command. You can't really do that effectively if we don't know what the gifts you've been given to us even fucking do. 
It's like giving a child a chainsaw and telling him to go chop down a tree. Okay, he can probably squeak by, but you're really inviting him more into danger, and he probably doesn't understand what the fuck is going on, especially if you don't remember to even put gas in the damn thing for him, you know? Like, sir, like, what the fuck, Heidelin? And, and I think the reason, going back to what I said just a moment ago, the reason she doesn't do this is because she wants her children to have free will. Again, that's entirely headcanon of mine, but it would kind of make sense why she's not as forthcoming about this information, because then her children will be probably feel more obligated to follow her commands and she doesn't want that you know she'd rather people you know fight for you know what they what they believe is right rather than be more di having direct control over them and directly telling them okay go do this but she might as well be doing that right now anyway considering she's told us several times now go and vanquish the darkness go and vanquish the darkness you're my beloved daughter but go and vanquish the darkness well, give us some hints about how we're supposed to do that. I mean, it was only very recently that we just figured out, and half of it was by sheer dumb luck, how to even fucking kill an ass here in the first place. Maybe that's why you failed seven times. Because nobody literally knows what to do. Okay, we know the Asians are the enemy. Okay, that doesn't really help us. Does not help us in the least bit, Highland. Oh my god, that's always annoyed me. All right. Okay, you you can get a hug. It's okay. It's all right. All right. We need to give you a hug before we end this episode. Uh, where is my hug emote? Hug emote right there. Oh, damn. I'm not selecting him. Fucking A. There. Oh my god, I even have to lean down. That's hilarious. That is utterly- I forgot about that. Utterly hilarious. But anyway, I've w talked way too much in this episode. Uh, I will not have much time anywhere else to actually say this. I actually do have to say a lot about Nathalia as well, but I'm gonna leave that in a text dump in the description if you want to read that. But for now, thank you for watching, friends, and I will see you next time.